everybody, I'm Boobs Kelly. Welcome back to another video. Today we are taking a look at the Critics' Choice Awards. Fashion fail extravaganza. It was the worst red carpet-ish experience I think we've seen in a while. Totally tragic. Let's start out with Iowa Debris. Now, she has had a couple of successes. She wore a beautiful Prada dress to the Golden Globes, and she wore a beautiful dress at the Emmys. But this is truly awful. This is from The Row, which is the Olsen Twins fashion line. And I think the suit itself is fine. It's meant to be slouchy and oversized. I'm not a fan personally of that sort of a vibe, but for what it is, it's fine. Especially with the width in the shoulders though, it's giving a little bit too oversized, like in an unintentional way. It's looking like she accidentally bought a size up because they're really dominating the look, these sort of oversized and, and droopy shoulders. But also the crew neck underneath, it doesn't match perfectly and it's way too casual. And then third problem, these shoes, just awful. If you're going to go for an oversized cream suit, for goodness sakes, do a better job of styling it. As far as like, if you're gonna do the masculine vibe, at least match something, you know, have the shoes match, have the crew neck match, have your whites match, or incorporate black somewhere else. Don't just plop black shoes onto an otherwise all white outfit. It maketh no sense. Divine Joy Randolph, I, I love the skirt portion. I think that the corseted bodice is pretty nice as well, but I wish the sleeve and bust portion was the same material as the skirt because this mixed media look plus the sparkly around the knee area, the embellishments there for the mermaid skirt is just one too many things going on. It's just one step too far to make it really flow nicely and look cohesive. Also that shine up here, because shine is always going to give more visual weight than matte. It's making her top area look even bigger. It's making her bust and shoulders look way huge and dominating to the look. And if it were in a matte fabric, it would not have the same impact. Next we have Carrie Russell in another questionable dress, unfortunately. This is Stefan Royong. I just don't like it. The high collar and the dolman sleeves and then the ruffles. It's giving frumpy, maybe stuffy, dowdy. It's just not working. I like the look of the train. The fabric looks beautiful, but the rest is just a bit moo moo gone wrong. She could have really freshened this up with like a bun, like a really high, like top knot bun, way up high on the head, would have like elongated her up out of this high collar. Alison Williams in Zahair Murad, I think it's fine. It's a tad frumpy, almost too much volume at the hip and thigh, it's just okay, but I like it much better than some of the other looks from this evening. Wearing Boss, we have Taraji P. Henson. This is pretty nice despite the boob squash. I mean, it's looking a little bit unpolished up at the top, but besides that, it looks pretty nice. I quite like it. I like the interesting draping here before the slit. That's something new and different. So I think it could have been even more successful if it was fitted just a little better across here, and maybe if she had bit more for a necklace to m kind of bring those shoes into the look more. Rosamund Pike is wearing Rodarte, and I absolutely love the color. This is so beautiful. I even don't mind the, the flower um, because it's like kind of be giving a belt vibe, so I think it works just fine. I really, really like the color of this dress. It's just so stunning. America Ferrera could have given us more. She should have given us more. It's just kind of a plain brown sequiny dress. It's got a little bit of a sheer aspect to it in the skirt portion. I just think like there wasn't even a necklace to spruce it up. Can we get a little bit more please? Something to just boost it. It is flattering though, and it is slimming and streamlined for her, but that doesn't mean it must be devoid of any zest whatsoever and boring. And I am an advocate for simple silhouettes and an advocate for simple dresses because sometimes they are the most flattering for someone. And the most important thing is that the person is complimented in their outfit, that they look more beautiful. It enhances their features. That's what's most important. But for this, it's just like there could have been something when you do have a simple dress, being really careful about your jewelry, accessories, and hairstyle is what will make it rather than leave it in that boring category. You do still have to try. Next, we have a Stella McCartney dress that I think it's like, okay, I quite like it. This is emerald fennel and I think for her body type, sleeves being up just on her shoulders would have been more flattering than these side ones that are kind of poofy. 
it's just not giving the most flattering appearance to this off the shoulder area here for her or maybe like her hair down something could have helped it a necklace something it just looks a little not that flattering up here but the rest of it looks really nice and I like the dress in general it's pretty otherwise it just maybe didn't flatter her the best it could have. Ali Wong in another successful look. She wore Dior to the Golden Globes. Very successful. Here she's wearing Givenchy and looks great. This is really pretty. I think it's a very pretty interesting design. I love that it has spaghetti straps. I don't mind the sheerness of it but for some reason I don't know if it's my computer my screens or the camera flashes. It looks like there's weird patches in it. So if there were weird patches those gotta go. If not it's great. That's just another one of those times where you got to be careful how things photograph and this sort of double layered mesh situation can create a challenge in, in photographs with the camera flashes kind of bouncing around inside the dress not knowing what to do and it doesn't always come off the best but in person I'm sure it looks stunning. Rachel Brosnahan, one of the most successful looks of the evening. I love this Givenchy dress here. It's got buckles across the top and it's a polka dot style embellishment throughout the dress that I absolutely love. I would wear this. I would buy it. I would love it. But then we have Juno Temple in the same designer, just kind of not meeting standards here. I think the styling is ruining this. Her hair just looks a little messy, quite frankly. Headband isn't really working. I think if she had an updo, the headband would have worked. If she would have just had her hair all swept up, it would have helped elongate would have looked really nice and polished and the headband would have been fine. But this just is giving a little too mature but also sloppy at the same time. Not quite working. In another Givenchy dress we have Ariana DeBose and I think it's just okay. I think she needed better foundation garments for this neckline. She needed something giving her a little bit of support because it's just looking a little droopy. This would have been pulled off way better with somebody with maybe a bigger bust or something. I think it's just kind of also throwing her proportions a bit off because you have this deep v-neck and a high slit and bare arms. It's kind of shortening her torso here. But in general, she looks beautiful. I just don't know that this was the best dress for her body type. Karen Pittman here looked beautiful in her ball gown. It would have benefited from some opera gloves to make it on trend, but it is a lovely fit and a classic silhouette, and I'm glad to see the necklace bringing the eyes up and really taking charge of her look, giving you a focal point, telling the eye where to go. That is the key to good styling. Now, this next dress, I'm not 100% sure who designed it, but it reminds me a little bit of Oscar de la Renta. This is Carla Gugino, and it is so pretty. This dress... I would have loved to see styled with like an old Hollywood glam hairstyle, like a side part and just big, loose, beautiful curls to juxtapose this modern texture of the dress. I think it would have been so beautiful. Maybe like a pearl necklace or something would have been so gorgeous. But regardless, this dress is beautiful. I absolutely love the modern take to this floral dress having this interesting texture and the slit is just nice and subtle. This is really pretty. Next we have Lily Gladstone in Christian Siriano and I like this way better than her Golden Globes look. This blue is so gorgeous and radiant. I absolutely love this big skirt and train almost in a bustle style as it comes from the back and around and the skirt of the dress is really slenderizing the way that it's draped. It's wonderful for her. She does have somewhat rounded shoulders so the hair down was smart and this dress looks flattering nonetheless. I particularly like that the bodice comes up high enough. It's not giving quad boob like the Golden Globes dress did. It fits. It could have done with maybe slightly taller, slightly bigger cups, but I'm not mad at this because it does fit well. Siriano is masterful at making sure things actually fit a variety of body types, and this is just proving it right here. It is gorgeous, elegant, and beautiful. Next, let's take a look at what Chanel brought us for the Critics' Choice Awards. We have Camilla Maroney, and I quite like this one. It's chic, it's fresh, it balances her figure nice. Perhaps a half up hairdo would have been cute, maybe even like a black headband to echo the bow a little bit, tie it all together. And then we have Belle Poli in Chanel Couture, and I like this. It's quite fun, it's different. The contrast between the fluffy, feathery sleeves and skirt is really nice contrast to that fitted, sleek blazer sort of bodice area here. I do think the sleeves could have been toned down just a tad to be a little bit more wearable but I'm not mad at it. I think this works. I think this is fun and quirky and cute. The bow tie, I could have done without, but I get it. They're going for the vibe. It's fine. Julianne Moore also wore Chanel Haute Couture, and meh, I don't particularly like this ballooned effect around the middle for her. It's a baby doll style that doesn't rain in the volume until well below the knee. 
And so it's just not my favorite silhouette. It's making her look a little bit frumpy, a little bit blah. It's not quite doing anything for her. The fabric seems okay though. It's got kind of an iridescent finish, which is interesting, but overall the slit and the brooch looking embellishment is just a little too clunky. Kind of disappointing. Next we have Ariana Greenblatt in Louis Vuitton. I love this double layered silk skirt. It is so, so pretty but I do not love the leather bustier. I think it would have been much more successful if it had been more of a corseted vibe and was a bit more fitted because of the fact that it's kind of loose and you can see that it's loose. And then like, I get it. They were trying to have it flow into the start of the skirt. It's just not quite giving her enough of a flattering look. It's not flattering her figure. It's making things look a little bit wider and an almost frumpy around the hip and it's taking away from her waistline too much which is not fair it shouldn't otherwise i like the look and i like the idea of it i just think it would have been so much more flattering on her if it was more like corseted like tight emma stone wore custom louis vuitton and it's again a simple perfectly fine dress i like the scalloped edge i think it adds a good amount of interest and i think that's flattering for her body type it's not creating a focal point of like her waistline or anything because she's a little bit more rectangular shaped so all of that is good would have benefited her look from a styling perspective of just giving it a little bit more interest a little bit something more to elevate it and enhance it okay one of the best most successful looks of the evening was tracy ellis ross in fendi haute couture this stretch corset and silk georgette skirt look absolutely impeccable and fabulous on her. This is perfection. It's also really flattering to her body type. It's so polished. It's so well styled. It's perfect. She's relatively hourglass, but she can lean a little bit pear, a little bit like of a bottom heavy hourglass, so to speak, where your hips or thighs are slightly, ever so slightly wider, but you still have a well-defined waist. So having this exposed shoulder is something she can really get away with well because it just adds a little bit of balance to her figure so it's perfectly lovely now before someone says we've seen this before it's boring no that's a trap fashion that is exclusively focused on something new at this point in time will literally rarely be flattering to the person themselves to their body because i mean it's been hundreds of years now with new styles of dresses and fashions and evol evolution in the fashion industry and for ladies styles that at this point something new that we haven't seen before is often something really sculptural or very much an art piece that's better saved for the runway or ad campaigns or photo shoots or editorials and magazines. It's not wearable. It's not going to make the person and their body look more beautiful and enhanced and complimented. When somebody's walking the red carpet, especially for like an awards show like this, they deserve, fully deserve, to look beautiful. If it is a new or interesting silhouette or an in innovative design, then that's a bonus. The priority should be the woman. On to Asia Naomi King. We have her in an Oscar de la Renta dress here. I love the color. It is a tad bit wrinkly and the bows are not my absolute fave, but the hair and makeup is perfection. The silhouette is great for her, so this is a win. Next, we have Greta Lee in Lueve, and I don't mind the pantsuit at all. I think that different shoes would have been a lot better because this looks like she's wearing flip-flops. Richa Morjani is wearing a beautiful Simkai dress here, but I have a couple gripes about it. It's really interesting. It's really pretty. It reminds me of, like, crochet. It's gorgeous. But I think it would have been a lot more successful if it just had a nude lining rather than trying to go for the see-through effect. Because that's see-through and there's going to be shadows around that area because of anatomy, obviously, then it's going to create a focal point of it. It's going to be noticeable, and that's not good. You don't want that in these types of dresses. You just don't. Also, I don't like the swirls on the boobs. I think that that would have been better if they were different shape, didn't have a swirl right off the boob. Also, it looks to be a little bit too low. It's giving a little bit of quad boob here. It's a little too low and tight. So if they had bodice had a better fit and it just had a nude lining overall, it would have been a million miles better. But next we have Jodie Foster taking a swim in this giant pantsuit. This is too big, too bulky. It shortens her and widens her. It's not the slouchy sort of a suit. It's a stiff looking suit. So the oversized aspect of it is just overwhelming her figure and awful. It looks bad. But then we have Danielle Brooks in this Montsori Garganza gown, and I think it looks just fine. I think it's really pretty. It's not wowing me necessarily. It's not like my favorite, but it is voluminous and pretty, and it's much better than her Golden Globes look. 
Ella Ramsey is wearing Tom Brown in this suit, which is much better than her Prada uniform suit from the Golden Globes. She's just, she's going for masculine, and for the look she's going for, it's successful. But I do think an updo would have been a million miles better. Just like a nice updo would have been much more polished, much more fresh and put together. Okay, so I was scrolling through these pictures and as I got to Billie Eilish, the top of it, I was like, ooh, this is pretty, I love it, oh my gosh, this is great. And then I got to the bottom and it was ruined. Up until the bottom of this dress, it, this look achieves a great balance between her aesthetic and flattering her body type. She looks amazing. And then there's these stupid shirt tails supposed to be hanging out of the bottom here, poking out of the bottom, completely ruined the look. This is Tom Brown as well. So what could have been amazing was tragic. Next we have Christina Ricci in Atsuko Kudo latex gown. It fits her well. It's sleek and simple. It's just fine. It's way better than the Fendi dress that she wore to the Golden Globes. But look at how she's posing here. It almost looks like she's uncomfortable in it or like she can't move properly. So I'm not sure if maybe the fit was not as perfect as it needed to be or perhaps the cups are kind of slipping off. They usually just use tape, fashion tape, to get these to stick and stay still and not move around. But it looks like maybe she's struggling in some way, shape, or form because it's a little awkward, the poses. But other than that, it's fine. But Meg Ryan looks tragic. I'm sorry to say, too. This is just accentuating every lump and bump here. It needed smoothing garments. She needed shapewear to make this more flattering. And also a necklace to draw the eye up and give us some sort of a focal point besides just keeping staring at the reflective parts of the dress from the camera flashes that are accentuating less than flattering aspects. So that was unfortunate. We have a couple of looks from Balmain. Margot Robbie is wearing this gorgeous red color with all these roses across the top. We're seeing a lot of this. Armani Privé has a lot of these roses tacked on to dresses lately. I am really glad to see her in something less on the nose Barbie, just because she's been perpetually in like unmistakably Barbie looks for so long. It feels like oh, an entire year. So this is really nice to do doing something different. I absolutely love the draping. It's very, very flattering for her figure and beautiful. I do like the roses, although I wish her hair was up in a more bleak updo, like a little bit of a better updo. It looks like there's some stra straggling hair bits hanging down that kind of make it look messy when it needed something more polished for this dress. Definitely one of the best looks of the evening. In the same designer, we have Ashley Medeque in this mini dress. I don't love it, but I also don't hate it. It does have great balance. The Harlequin pattern may have been more successful without the loud trim. Perhaps in a matching hue, it would have read less clown, more fab. Then we have Chelsea Handler in Alex Perry, and I quite like this. The square neckline is fresh, it's contrasting. It may be a tad bit too tight, though. You can see it's really pulling a lot here and there, so I think a slightly better fit would have helped, but overall it's quite nice, quite pretty, and polished. Next in Armani Privé, we have Emily Blunt and Carrie Mulligan. I absolutely love everything about Emily Blunt's dress besides the chunky giant rose. It's just too dense. The dress itself is amazing and she looks radiant in it though, and I love her makeup. She perfectly matched her makeup and jewelry for this event. Carrie Mulligan, again, we need a necklace here, people. If you're gonna have a lot of of bare up here and your dress is relatively simple, it's not too busy, then put a necklace on. Give us a focal point besides just kind of bouncing around the entire dress and then just staying at the neckline. You need something to bring it back up. So she would have benefited from a necklace. Otherwise, really beautiful dress here. Tasia Perino looks so amazing, you guys. Good for her after the disastrous Golden Globes dress. This is so great. Whoever did that to her at the Globes is rude. This is sleek and polished and flatters her figure. Just look at the difference between these two. It's amazing. The dress is staying simple again. The, the way Jennifer Lopez did at the Golden Globes with her pink dress and her gorgeous, big, dramatic opera coat, letting that opera coat be the focal point, that's what the approach Fantasia is taking here. This feathered opera coat is the focal point. You don't need anything else. The dress can stay simple and sleek. Perfect. And all of the things are perfectly matched. And also notice how much that necklace helps to bring the eye back up to the face. It's perfect. Quinta Brunson in this beautiful dress. It's so pretty. It's a really nice option. It's by Georges Hobika and beautiful. Love the updo. That's the perfect choice for this. Looks great. Dua Lipa wore Prada. And although this is a great silhouette, the texture combined with the color is just not great. I find the color combo with the texture to be kind of 
reminding me of like meat or, or coral or some sort of other unpleasant thing, like really unpleasant. So I think it would have been great in like blue or like lilac, some sort of other color. It would have been fabulous. This color is not working. Then we have Brit Marling in a satin yellow Prada dress that I hate. I hate this. The shape, the train, it's just bulky. It's incongruous. It should have stayed on the runway if it had to be made at all. Brie Larson is also wearing Prada here, and I want to like this so much. The sheer panel, I'm just not fully behind. I think it's interesting. It's just not my favorite. I this would have been way more successful if the sheer panel was just sewn as like almost like a shell or a cover to the dress and sewn down because it kind of wafting out in front like this, like a train in the front, looks like a trip hazard and it just doesn't look as nice. It doesn't flow as nicely. It looks messy. The velvet dress underneath and the straps are a nice updated modern take to a simple column dress here, but it's almost like screens coming off. It's just, it's just a tad awkward. I do like her styling for it. The updo and the necklace are beautiful. Could have gone for a bracelet to really enhance the look though. Greta Gerwig has another fail. She's wearing Molly Goddard here. Again, this is a miss. It's it's so frumpy. It's so bulky. There's no shape to it. It's it's quite frankly kind of ugly, this dress. It's not good. Devery Jacobs also in a rather tragic, bulky, shapeless top. I'm just not on board with these. They're not flattering. This just looks silly. It's no good. This Witherspoon in Celine here looks really nice though. The bow low on the torso is perfect as it provides balance to her upper body, which is slightly more broad than her hips, and in this case exposed, so it's adding visual weight. So this allows her waist to appear more well-defined in contrast to that big bow's volume. So this is really, really well done. I do think a necklace would have been a great addition here though. Another Oscar de la Renta look was Elizabeth de Becky's like pantsuit thing happening here. I hate it. It's so frumpy. It's chunky. It's unflattering. It's a complete fail in every way. There's nothing about this that works or looks nice. Nothing. Mandy Moore wore Ellie Saab and my first impression is that it looks a bit stiff. I think if it had sleeves you could get away with this really deep v-neck and waist cutouts but when you have the slit, the waist cutouts, it's sleeveless and it's got a deep v, it's creating an awkward silhouette. So I think it just has too much going on for the heavy looking fabric. It also could have been more successful if it was more flowy. If the skirt had flow to it I think it might have worked better as well but this all combined isn't working. However, I will say this sort of coral color is not one many people could get away with wearing and she looks great in it. Cheryl Lee Ralph looked amazing in this gown. It would have looked amazing with sleeves or even a bit more volume in the skirt. It does look a tad bit tight, but it still looks fabulous. I always wish to see more sleeves this time of year for these early in the year awards shows because it's chilly even in California in January and nobody does sleeves. It blows my mind. Okay, here we have Maria Bello in an absolute tragedy. This is so awful. It looks so messy. You have a collar. You have huge sleeves, tons of necklaces, a black belt, and an embellished skirt, like bedazzled skirt. Way too much happening. Nothing matches. Nothing flows. Nothing works. This is bad. I could have seen the skirt working with a sim slim fit, simple black top or something that matched the nude skirt, perhaps. Just like literally anything else would have been better than this. This is a true tragedy. Next, we have Angela Bassett and Pamela Rowland, and this is just too shoulder heavy. I would have liked it, but no, it's way too shoulder heavy. This just doesn't work. It's throwing her proportions off. It's looking way too bulky and widening up here, so it's not flattering her at all, sadly. Rebecca Romaine, I love this, but she needed some sort of volume at the hip because, again, we have a really, really widening effect across the shoulders and already slightly wider shoulder line than hip. So it's just kind of creating a top-heavy dominance in this silhouette that would have been much better if she had some sort of flowiness to the skirt or just a little volume there in some way, shape, or form. Even like a peplum panel would have helped it along. So it's almost working not quite. I do love the purple color, though. Charlotte Stout, this is a huge no. Absolutely not. Not in any way. Horrible. Sandra O oh wore Harbison Studio, and once again, it's a huge miss. This is awful. The giant flower right on the crotch is a hard pass for me. And then the messy halter neck situation is just so messy. This gown is a complete disaster with the exception of the train that looks really pretty. Besides that, it's awful in every way. 
Sarah Snook wore Kong Tree, and it's all right. The sleeves look a little bit clunky, but I think it's just fine. It's kind of boring, though. I think that it looks like the sleeves were going for, like, a bit of a flare, and since it's all black, it's kind of hard to see, but it's just, it's kind of boring, kind of clunky, kind of thick. Natasha Leone wore Dolce & Gabbana, and I think it's fine. I wish the sequins were incorporated in the suspenders, too, to, like, make it more cohesive and flow all together. It's not my personal style aesthetic, but it is much better than her Golden Globes spiky dress. One of the most successful looks of the night, Aquafina in Dior Haute Couture. This two-toned lace dress is so beautiful and beautifully made, and it creates great proportions for her. I think it would have been even more amazing if she didn't updo, like a high bun would have been fabulous with like maybe a dramatic earring or just like a big stone stud. This is really pretty. Even if you think that it looks a little bit dated, it is a modern take and it is beautiful. Kaylee Cuoco also wore Dior and I hate the shoes that she chose. They are just kind of messy and loud. They don't work well here. She also needed her hair to be up, like an updo. Maybe a necklace would have been nice. It's not my favorite dress, but it is just a simple, beautiful Dior dress. And Aniston also wore Dolce & Gabbana and I like it better than her Golden Globes dress because it's different. She's not in a strapless column gown yet again. I personally don't mind someone sticking with what works well for them. I think that if it makes them feel comfortable and confident, especially if it flatters their body type, then that's actually quite good style sense to stick to something that you know works. But people are always like, wow, oh, it's so boring once again. I think it's okay. This, the pantsuit version of it, I think it's fine. I think it's pulled off just fine. I don't particularly love it, but it's not awful either. I think it definitely needed a necklace. Sally Richardson Whitfield giving Princess Catherine 007 premiere vibes here. I love this gorgeous dress. The pattern enhances her waistline. She is a little bit pear-shaped, so she could have gotten away with some shoulder pads here. Add a little bit of structure and enhance the balance even further, but this was a very beautiful dress, very beautiful choice, and I love the hairstyle she went for it. Calla Lane, I kind of want to like this, but I hate the Whoville hair. As for the men, I'm just going to real quick breeze through these. Charles Melton here. I love everything except for the arrow here pointing straight to the crotch. Maybe could have done better. Tom Holland in Prada looking pretty nice. Dominic Sessa, he tried, but no, this is bad. Killian Murphy, you know, I've never loved these loose ties. I think it's just okay. Tatanka Means looks fabulous. I just don't love the cummerbund. Coleman Domingo really went for it. I'm not 100% behind it, but it's it's interesting. It's cool. Ruffalo, classic. Pedro Pascal, he needed to stick with monochrome. These shoes need to be matching. The black shoe ruins it. It widened the legs already, so changing the shoe like that made it look like he had tiny feet. James Marsden, I don't love it. It really needed something to match. None of this matches. Tom Hiddleston, it looks okay. Sterling K. Brown, really fabulous. He looks fabulous. He's probably one of the best of the evening. John Krasinski and Dolce & Gabbana, it was good. Not necessarily a wow, but it was good. Barry Keoghan and Zayna, it was pretty good. Lee Sung Jin had this ballerina suit. I love it, but I do hate the toe split loafers. Kieran Culkin in this teal Zayna suit, it was a great color, great fit, absolutely fabulous, one of the best. And Matt Bomer, blue perfection. Absolutely stunning. I really found the Golden Globes to be a lot more interesting than the Critics' Choice Awards red carpet. There was a lot more color there. The Critics' Choice Awards seemed to be a sea of black and white, which meant it was, quite frankly, a little bit more boring in terms of fashion and looks, which isn't always a bad thing. The super loud, always pushing the envelope, often sacrifice the beauty of the wearer, losing their figure and femininity for the sake of wearing a runway piece or an art piece. And so while I appreciate those designs, they don't really fit into the context of an awards show that well. That's like several hours long and requires red carpet walk and photos in like a crowded room. The worst of the evening would be the plethora of oversized, stiff, looks like Greta Gerwig, Maria Bello, Elizabeth Debicki, Sandra Oh. The best would have to be Margot Robbie, Tracy Ellis Ross, Rachel Brosnahan, Sally Richardson Whitfield, and Lily Gladstone. But it was tough because I wasn't like completely obsessed or wowed by very many of these in terms of the complete package. Like great styling, great dress, beautifully put together. 
There weren't really many that hit all those marks at once. What's your favorite and least favorite look from the Critics' Choice ceremony? Leave it in the comments for me. I cannot wait to read. Thank you so much for joining me for today's fashion edition, and I will see you next time. Have a happy day, everybody. Bye!